Um, Hey, good evening, uh, everyone. Let me just uh, say hello to everybody. Um, we will formally open in just a moment. I know a lot of people are still getting on, but I wanted to uh, ask um, Maggie, is, uh, Ma I see Maggie, Maggie Conroe, Conroe, if you come on and just share a little bit about how we can get even more people engaged and involved tonight. Maggie, I think you're muted. I think she's trying to unmute herself. Come on, you hey get everyone. muted. You get well, yeah. <laughs> evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, if you are a Facebooker, this video is streaming on Facebook. So you can go to Facebook and go to Together Louisiana's page and share this video. And tonight you're going to learn why it's so important for us to get this message out um, and make sure that all of our fellow folks from Louisiana understand this amendment and understand what's at stake here. There's a link in the chat. You can click the link. You'll see the video. You just hit share and then it will go to your page and all your friends, Facebook friends will be able to see this video. Whether or not they register to join this event, they'll see this video. So thank you so much for being here and welcome to the civic education campaign launch. Thank you so much, Maggie. We certainly do appreciate you. And um, I, I just want to be as good a steward of your time as possible. Let me just say my name is Theron Jackson. I'm the pastor of the Morningstar Baptist Church in Shreveport. So glad to have with me co-hosting this meeting tonight, the Reverend Sean Anglum, um, who is from New Orleans, Louisiana. And, um, and, uh, and I'm so glad to be uh, sharing this time with him. This is an important night because we're going to be talking about the cost and the consequences of something that you have to know about. And, and remember, it's Amendment 5. You'll hear that a lot tonight, Amendment 5. But there are costs and there are consequences to this. And so tonight we launch a kickoff our citizen education effort. And so I want to ask uh, tonight as we do, um, I, I know that uh, Reverend Barbara Gerald is, is on with us tonight. And I'd like to ask uh, Reverend Barbara Gerald if she will open us up with a prayer. And then immediately following that, I want you to meet my co-host, Sean Angler. Reverend Gerald. Thank you. If everyone would uh, take a deep breath, inspire, uh, lift your hearts towards the spirits of your faith, Invite that spirit, the God of your understanding, God of many names, to guide this meeting, guide this time, strengthen our efforts for peace, justice, and all that is good and right. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Gerald. Reverend Anglum? Thank you, Reverend Jackson. Again, I'm Sean Anglum, the pastor of First Grace United Methodist Church in New Orleans. And we want to just take a minute to offer a focus for our meeting tonight. And I know we're on Zoom, uh, but let's let's feel the power and the gift of being together across the state of Louisiana. I want you to say these simple words with me. Amendment five is a big deal. Say that with me. Amendment, Amendment five. five is, is a, big, a big, deal. big deal. If Amendment 5 passes, it is a big step backward to backroom politics where the most powerful make their own deals. If it is defeated, which is why we are here tonight, it is a big step forward for the future, a vibrant future for public school children and for all of Louisiana. We believe that if people simply know what Amendment 5 says, we will defeat it and we will win. That is why we are here tonight. We thank you for joining us and we call you to the task of understanding and the task of action. Reverend Jackson. Thank you, Reverend Anglum. I think you are right. If people understand this, then we will win. There are some people around the state who do understand it. 
because they've been involved in action. I want to ask tonight, we'll do a roll call of some of these folks who are doing the work around the state of Louisiana. And I am so proud to be colleagues of these people. I want to start with the greater Baton Rouge area. If you will introduce yourself, tell us who's with you and, and share something that you think we need to hear. Thank you, Ben Hi, I'm Laverne Simino from East Baton Rouge Parish. EBR has 75 leaders on this call right now. My fellow teachers and I heard the earlier call. We worked with Together Baton Rouge to close corporate tax loopholes, which had drained billions of taxes from our state. Through our work, we won and need to continue to win. We reclaimed millions of lost taxes for East Baton Rouge Parish, including five million for public schools. We are ready to continue to hold corporate Louisiana responsible to our communities and state, not just their shareholders. Thank you so much, Laverne. Next from Shreveport and Bozier. I'm Willie Myers representing Caddo Bozier Parish. We have 60 leaders on our call tonight. We have been in this fight for six years, working to close the corporate tax loopholes, and we're winning. We've already have reclaimed $16.5 million for two parishes, including 8 million per year for public schools. We are paying attention. Thank you so much, Ms. Myers. And St. John the Baptist. Ms. Hampton, you on? Let's move on, Reverend Jackson. All right, Arlene's uh, Parish. I, I, I think she's there, Ms. Hampton. Okay. okay. I am Mary Hampton from St. John the Baptist Parish. Last year, we fought and defeated corporate tax loopholes for Marathon Oil, which are some of the biggest in the country. Because of that victory, our school and other services will get $40 million in new annual funding starting this December. We are paying attention and we are ready to reimagine St. John the Baptist Parish. Thank you so much, Ms. Hampton. Uh, from the New Orleans area. Thank you, Reverend Jackson. I'm Sean Anglum at First Grace United Methodist Church in New Orleans. We have 150 leaders on the call. We're in a fight to reform our criminal justice system and we believe we'll win that fight. And we've reclaimed $15 million for public schools and other taxing bodies in our city. Thank you. Hey, and listen, we have lots of other colleagues around who are on from different regions as well. Uh, by the way, St. James Paris, congratulations. Just uh, last week defeated a $24 million exemption that would have lasted 10 years in that parish. Congratulations mm -hmm. to the folks in St. James Parish. And there are a lot of other parishes around this state, um, the rest of the oh. state and across our entire area. Reverend, Reverend Jackson, could I ask you to hold on a minute? I, I, I just realized something. Uh, we have to, we've, we've hit the cap of 300 and need to expand our uh, capacity here. So just uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna let people in. That's called a good problem. We'll take right, that problem. Right. <laughs> good trouble. We're about to see a lot more folks come in. That's a good problem. <laughs> that is so good to hear. I saw it at three hundred, and it's like I know we've got more coming in. All right. Let's see if that works.
so 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 people are going to be kind of rejoining and coming in again um and um uh co-chairs you can decide we want to forge ahead or wait for folks yeah well, we may as well wait if we're waiting now let's give them a minute there we go yeah While we're waiting, uh, I think maybe uh, Maggie, if you could just make that uh, announcement uh, um, about posting on Facebook. Hey everyone, if you're just joining us, this uh, civic education campaign launch is being streamed on Facebook. You can, uh, we'll drop a link in the chat and you can click that link. It'll pull up your Facebook or pull up our Facebook so that you can share this video on your newsfeed and share it with your friends. Because as you'll see this evening, what we're sharing here tonight, it is so important that um, all of our neighbors and family and friends understand this amendment and what's at stake here. So look for that link and share. Thank you, Ms. Conera. I even figured out how to share it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you, Reverend. One, just one for once in my life, I'm one step ahead. <laughs> Folks, if you're just joining us, we, we have just been setting up our meeting, uh, reminding folks that we're here to talk about uh, a, a big deal. And that big deal is Amendment 5. And it'll be a good day for Louisiana when we defeat that amendment. And so uh, we're here to educate ourselves about Amendment 5 and then to take action on that education. We've just been pausing for a few minutes because we got a good problem, which means we have so many people that want to be a part of this, uh, we've needed to expand our Zoom and give them just a second uh, to join in. So just uh, hang tight with us. If you know how to share on Facebook, you'll find that link in the chat section and you can post it on your Facebook page. And again, we are here to educate ourselves about Amendment 5. Uh, we've come to believe that if people simply understand this amendment, we will defeat this amendment. We'll win Absolutely. on Election Day. And, and, and Pastor Anglum, if I could make a suggestion just to get us one more minute as we're letting people join, uh, go to your gallery view and just scroll through. And, and, and if you're willing, this would be a time to turn your uh, video on and I'll take my own advice here. Uh, and, uh, and just look at the range of people all over the state who are interested in becoming a part of public policy here. Yeah. Thank you for that broad. There's power in the numbers. That's what we. That's what we have. We we may not have the funds, but we got the people, and it's good to see everyone tonight. And, and for the people who are watching on Facebook or on the recording, they're only going to get one page. So, uh, 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 Reverend Jackson, just 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 tell us what we're looking at in terms of the audience. Well, we have uh, we've got 15, 13 to fifteen pages of uh, beautiful Louisiana people. Um, a, a menagerie of the 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 best and the brightest of Louisiana um, from um, from the top of the boot to the bottom to the tip of the toe of the boot. So uh, so glad to have everybody uh, here. Uh, even saw somebody um, who had a sign who made their own sign, right? Defeat five, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so glad to see that. Um, that's some uh, that's some folks who. Uh, I may not be related to, but I saw the last name Jackson more than one time here. So I know it's a good meeting if it's several Jacksons here. So, uh, so uh, thank you all so much for tuning in uh, with us uh, tonight. I think um, this is going to be beneficial. It will be absolutely beneficial to you to be a part of this. And um, Broderick, um, I think that uh, again, 
again, let me just say, um, we are, for those of you who are tuned in tonight, I know you know why you're here, but let me just reiterate the fact that we are launching tonight uh, a citizen's education campaign. Um, uh, I said earlier that um, sometimes in, in where we live now in our country and even in our state, we find ourselves as the us versus them. Um, and uh, unfortunately, things turn out that way sometimes. And one of the us versus them uh, in our scenario even now is that there is this 1% who are the haves and it seems like everybody else is in the 99% who are the have nots. But when you're in the 1%, um, you use the money to your advantage. So when you're in the 99%, I think we got to use our voices to our advantage. We have to use our numbers. And, and we do that when we go out to vote and we when we make our voices heard. This is a unique opportunity to do just that, where everybody is an equal player in this um, situation. And, and tonight you'll hear more about one particular thing, um, and that is Amendment 5 that seeks to um, that seeks to either, as I think Reverend Anglin aptly said, either take us backwards or, or, or if it's defeated, open the door for us to go forward in a different way. So, uh, so thank you all for tuning in tonight for such what I think is such an important educational conversation. Uh, with that, uh, Reverend Anglin, uh, let me say that I'm excited about those groups. Some of you all heard about what's going on in Baton Rouge, the kind of money that's been saved. You heard about what's happening in New Orleans, what happened, Miss Hampton talked about in um, St. James Parish, um, excuse me, son, St. John the Baptist Parish. And then I want to say to you again, St. James Parish has just proven to us that when people work together, that the 99 still have power uh, because when they worked together just last week, they turned down, they said no to $24 million of, of corporate loopholes, of tax giveaways that would have crippled their parish even more at, over 10 years. And so we're winning victories all over the state. Um, and I, I'm just excited about the fact that we are not just doing it. We've been doing it for a while and, this, and mm -hmm. there's much more to come. We've reclaimed over $140 million that can now benefit children and schools and other interests around the state of Louisiana. Some great people have done that. And so I'm looking forward tonight to have some discussion with some great people about some great things that this state can do. Um, speaking of um, great people, in, in the state of Louisiana. Louisiana is home to and the birthplace of many people who've made a difference around the state, around our country, and in, and in many instances, even around the world. Uh, we have tonight uh, with us someone who has done just that, who is no stranger. If you are from the state of Louisiana, you've seen him on uh, a statewide scale, you've seen him on a national um, level as well. And he's here with us tonight. I, I want to say, I, I think, uh, He's prepared now to share with us a little bit about his perspective of this um, Amendment 5. I'd like to introduce Louisiana's own son um, in the presence of Lieutenant General Russell Honoré, a retired United States Army General. General Honoré. Louisiana, hello, bonjour, guten tag, hola. <laughs> this is a call to action a call to action to say no to constitutional amendment number five. Amendment number five would be a disaster for Louisiana. We are 49th in education. We are the third largest energy producer in the second poorest state. We cannot afford amendment number five. It will be more corporate welfare to the rich, to the rich co companies, many of them foreign owned, or out of state owned by denying our parishes taxes that are need to support our schools. As a note, Louisiana like to look to Texas. Texas does not allow tax incentives for industry to deny school taxes. Texas does not do that. Louisiana has been doing it far too long. The call to action, go vote. The call to action, vote no to number number five, you, number five, no. Thank you very much, Louisiana. Thank you, General Honoré. Always good to have your voice uh, and very clear message to vote no on this and tell somebody to vote no. Amendment five did not just drop out of the sky. You know, it has a context and we wanna just take a moment for us to come to understand uh, the context of Amendment five. So. We were asking uh, Ms. Diane Hanley and Mr. Edgar Cage if they would 
give us the context of this amendment. On November 3rd, Louisiana voters will vote on whether to amend the state constitution to create a new corporate tax exemption for industry. Now, some stories only make sense in context. So we're gonna start by giving the context of how this amendment came about. We'll spend about five minutes on that and then spend about another 12 minutes on understanding what that amendment would do and why we think it's a really big deal. One of the most important things to happen in Louisiana in recent years is that citizens have started winning against the state's gigantic corporate tax subsidies and loopholes. In 2019, St. Bernard teachers closed tax loopholes on the Chalmette refinery. They reclaimed $4 million in school revenue and increased $2,600 per year salary for every teacher. Residents in St. John the Baptist started paying attention to one of the costliest loopholes in the state. St. John the Baptist Parish is in Cancer Alley. It's mostly African-American. Its cancer rate is 50 times higher than the national average. It also has one of the largest refineries in the nation, Marathon Oil, a $3.5 billion facility. Since 2000, Marathon Oil has gotten 127 separate tax exemptions costing $800 million. This single refinery has more property exempted than every business in the entire state of Texas. In 2019, local officials in St. John the Baptist regained control over these exemptions from the State Board of Commerce and Industry. Residents organized and the school board and parish council rejected Marathon's exemptions for the first time. St. John's property tax revenue will increase next year from 57 million to 100 million, an increase of more than 40 million in a single year. 14 million of that new revenue is going to St. John's schools. That's enough to give every St. John teacher a $30,000 raise. So citizens have started closing corporate tax loopholes, and it's beginning to produce new revenue for people. And you know what? There are lobbyists out there who are used to running this state and writing its tax laws. They've gotten used to you and me paying their clients' taxes, and that group does not like that this is happening. And that takes us to Amendment 5. So that is the context for amendment number five. Citizens are closing the largest corporate tax loophole in the history of Louisiana. So industry set out to create a new loophole and that is amendment five. Here are seven things to know about amendment five. Number one is where amendment five came from. The most valuable property in Louisiana is a liquid natural gas exporting facility in Cameron Parish. It's called Cameron LNG, but it's mostly owned by Japanese investors and it's worth about $12 billion. Last year, Cameron LNG paid $38,000 in property taxes, 38,000 on its $12 billion in property. Cameron LNG's exemptions are about to expire, which means that they will start owing about $200 million in property taxes per year. So Cameron LNG tried to enter into what they called a cooperative endeavor agreement, under which instead of paying $200 million a year, they would pay four, $4 million. The courts, the courts declared that unconstitutional. That was in February, 2017. One month later, Cameron LNG's lobbyists started a drive to amend the constitution to create a new tax loophole and make its illegal deal legal. And that's the origin of what became Amendment 5. 
The second thing to know about Amendment 5 is that it only won legislative approval because citizens were under a stay at home order. In 2017, 20, and in 2018, and in 2019, citizens defeated bills identical to what became Amendment 5. Here's what the legislative hearing looked like with citizens present. What House Bill 444 does is provides for an additional tool for economic development, creates an additional economic development tool. What this does is to come say, well, we lost. How about we change the Constitution in order to adapt the Constitution to our interest in saving money? I'm so tired of hearing about the toolbox for economic development for business. Where's the toolbox for the average citizen? But we still give billions of dollars away to businesses. You know, this tool in the toolbox, it's a screwdriver. And guess who's being screwed? I just want to move to defer this bill. Testimony, by the way. And I watched the reaction from everybody behind you. I was waiting for a lot of this. Oh, no, that's not right. Oh, he's wrong. This is what it looked like. Deer in headlight. Like, boom, pants down. Caught. But it's like the truth about what the bill is doing, I think you captured. Uh, the chair votes no. So the bill's deferred. The bill is deferred. So it's just an. That was in 2017. And the same thing happened in 2018 and 2019. Citizens testified on what Amendment 5 was really about and how it got defeated. Then in May 2020, Citizens went under a stay-at-home order for COVID, and industry lobbyists went into overdrive on Amendment 5. This is what the same committee hearing looked like without citizens present. It was deferred. So it's just an option. It's a tool in the toolkit. It's a tool and tool chest. I have 92 emails uh, in opposition to this. I'm just going to accept all of those and put them into the record in Globo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, is there no one here to speak? Six shade, two nay. Uh, with that, Senate Bill number 272 is reported favorably. Thank you, committee. The third thing to know about Amendment 5 is what it would do. Amendment 5 would allow major corporations to negotiate what they pay in property taxes and whether they would pay them at all. It would let one group of taxpayers, industrial manufacturers, have a different set of rules for taxes than anyone else. Instead of paying the tax rate approved by voters, they would be able to pay whatever amount they are able to negotiate through special agreements called cooperative endeavor agreements. Amendment five would create one set of rules for industrial corporations and another set of rules for everybody else. The fourth thing to know about amendment five it's got no guardrails or restrictions on what tax exemptions could be approved for industrial corporations. Corporations would not be required to create any jobs for to get tax exemptions. Exemptions could go to businesses that are actually laying off their workforce. And there'd be no restrictions for polluters or dirty industry. But the most incredible of all is point number five. Amendment five puts no time limits on the duration of its cooperative endeavor agreements. That means a corporation could be exempted from taxation, from property taxation for 25 years, 50 years, or even 100 years. A piece of legislation that accompanied the bill allows exemptions up to 25 years which is as long as eight terms of office for the average local elected official. Think about what the lack of any time limits would permit. All a major corporation would have to do is win one, one single election cycle, get a deal to pay no taxes, and that arrangement would be binding 
on all future elected officials and taxing bodies. The sixth thing you should know under Amendment 5, every household and 99% of businesses would pay <clears throat> higher property taxes. Why? Because when one group gets a special deal and doesn't have to pay its taxes, everybody else picks up the tab. And when the group that is exempted are the owners of the most valuable property in the parish, then it's going to be a very big tab. Amendment five is gonna raise your taxes and my taxes and everybody's taxes that you know, because it's going to create special deals for powerful interests that the rest of us will pay for. Finally, the seventh thing to know about Amendment 5, it would defund our schools, roads, and other public services. Our teachers are among the most underpaid in the nation. Our roads are torn to pieces. Our water systems are barely holding on. And our bridges are falling apart. We know how things got this way. Throughout the last century, while powerful special interests were carving Louisiana's tax code into switched cheese with loopholes and inside deals, citizens weren't paying attention. Tonight, we are paying attention. I want you to take a moment to scroll through the numerous pages of people, citizens who are ready to fight and to work. Let's look at who's on, on this call. It's very, very impressive. We have over 400 people on this call, but look at who's with you. And General Honore, we heard your call to action, sir. We accept your challenge. We are ready. We are ready to spread the word. And we are ready to go out and work and inform the citizens of this state to complete our mission on November 3rd to defeat Amendment 5. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Cage, and thank you, Ms. Hanley. That's a, those are very powerful numbers uh, that we all needed to hear in a, in a very powerful history. But we know that those, those numbers are connected to these people that we're seeing. They're connected to our students. They're connected to our schools. And uh, we'd like to hear some testimonies of people who have felt the effects of the way the system has, has been run for so long. And we'd like to begin with Dr. Tia Mills. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Tia Mills, president of the Louisiana Association of Educators. Many of my colleagues are back in person classrooms today. We don't have the PPE we need. Educators are risking their lives. We are the lowest paid teachers in this region and our salaries have declined by about $8,500 over the last 10 years. There is plenty of money in this state. There's no good reason that our teachers don't have the protection they need. And there's no good reason we have the lowest paid educators in the region. We have a choice. We can keep shipping our public school money to corporations in other countries or we can keep that money here and invest it in our children. We are going to defeat Amendment 5 so we can invest that money in our children and our future. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much for that witness. We know that you, you speak for a lot of teachers uh, feeling what you're feeling and experiencing what you're experiencing. We'd now like to uh, hear from Students Fighting Five. Are you with us this evening? Uh, ask him to try again to unmute themselves. Uh, Students Fighting Five, can you unmute yourself and, and join us? And please introduce yourself. 
they, they may have not been able to get on. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, uh, move on. Let's move on to another testimony uh, from Father Jay. Are you with me, uh, Father Jay? I think you're muted, Father Jay. I'm sorry. I'm my name is Father Jay Andrew, and I represent the Episcopal Diocese of Louisiana and the Greater New Orleans Interfaith Climate Coalition. I want to read this proposal to you again. Do you support an amendment to authorize local governments to enter into cooperative endeavor ad valorem tax exemption agreements with new or expanding manufacturing establishments for payments in lieu of taxes? Now, to be honest with you, when I read this for the first time, I didn't have any idea of what it meant. And the second time I read it, I didn't understand it. The third time I didn't understand it. This language is incredibly difficult to understand. And I think that's on purpose. When I first read this amendment and I heard ad valorem tax, I thought who besides Chancellor Palpatine from Star Wars uses language like ad valorem? It's difficult, it's convoluted, the wording, it's muddy. When someone did explain it to me, I asked, where is the justice in this proposed amendment? There is no justice in it. However, once we the people understand it, we will defeat it. In my faith tradition of Christianity, the apostle Paul admits to the Corinthians that if he had to, he would be a fool for his faith. And maybe I look foolish for admitting that I needed someone to explain this language to me, but I did. This is written this way because they think I'm a fool, but now I understand it and everyone in our state needs to understand it. We have a duty to our neighbors, no matter what their religious background is, to explain what Amendment 5 will do. When something this important is written this way, it's morally suspect and lacks any of the justice that amendments are meant to convey. If you are a person of faith, any faith, somewhere in your faith tradition, you are called to protect those who have no voice, those who are on the margin of society. Use your language to explain, your voice to tell, and your vote to bring justice to the people of Louisiana because once we the people understand it, we will defeat it. Thank you, Father Jay. I'm gonna hand it over to you, Reverend Jackson. You're okay. muted, Reverend Jackson. I'm hey. sorry. I, thank you, Father Jay. I, I just wanted to say that I, I think you're right. You when, when, um, when people understand it, we will defeat it and we will win, but we have to be sure people understand it. Uh, to that end, I would like to invite uh, Shane Riddle into this conversation and Shane to talk a little bit about our strategy because we have to make sure people do understand it and getting the message spread and knowing the message is important to us. So I'd like to ask Shane if he join us tonight and share a little bit about our strategy. Uh, thank you, Reverend Jackson. And ladies and gentlemen, I am Shane Riddle. And I would like to share with you some, well, five polling points on CA5 and then five key messages on CA5 that you may use to talk with voters and your friends and family on why Constitutional Amendment 5 is a bad idea. When you see what the public thinks about this amendment, when they understand it, there is a clear path to defeat Constitutional Amendment 5. First, we know from polling that right now, 40% of voters in Louisiana are voting no on this amendment, Amendment number five. And we know that 22% right now are just undecided. That's good because that's a, that's a direct path to victory for us as long as voters can understand it. This means that older Democrats and African-Americans that meant to support the no side 
They're also self-identified as Republicans, blue collar voters and older women that are also disproportionately undecided. These are our undecided voters. That said, the base voters who meant to vote no, but voted yes until they understood the amendment includes Democrats, African-Americans and older voters. They should be a part of the base that we contact and that we went over with a clarifying message and good information. We need to focus on the investment angle. This is the angle that, that, that robs our communities of millions of needed resources for public schools, police and fire, healthcare, and roads. And lastly, we know that the phrases backroom deals and drains millions of dollars highlights key reasons to believe that voters believe these are the reasons that the amendment is bad. So moving forward, we want to focus on our winning messages. Number one, Amendment five will cause too much harm to our local communities. If this passes, it will drain millions of dollars that our local communities need to keep us safe, healthy, and educate our children. We will see a cutback in money that we can invest in education and healthcare and roads and police and fire. Our local communities cannot afford amendment number five. And that's the first key message. The second key message is, let's be honest. No company is going to negotiate to pay more. We all know that. If wealthy corporations pay less, you better believe all of us will pay more. Our families can't afford Amendment 5. CA5 is a tax increase on all the rest of us. Number three, Amendment 5 will return us to the days when backroom deals were cut between politicians and wealthy corporations. And let's be honest, no company is going to negotiate to pay more. We know that. Backroom corporate deals never benefit working families. And key message number four, Amendment 5 has far-reaching consequences that will be harmful to the economy, harm our ability to train people for jobs of the future, and rob us of the infrastructure, infrastructure projects that keep many of us working. And then lastly, Number, the number five key message is vote no on Amendment 5. Protect our local priorities. Protect us from tax increases and protect our local economy and stop the backroom deals. So these are the key messages that we can use to contact voters to bridge that gap and then to tell our story about why we are voting no on Amendment 5. Reverend Jackson, I'm handing it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. And um, thank you for taking us through that to, to see what the messages are, but also want us to think about how we get this done. And uh, I wanna invite again to this conversation, Maggie uh, Conero, who will tell us a little bit about, you know, tactically what we do beyond this meeting. Hey everyone, my name is Maggie Conero. Thank you so much for being here tonight. As you just heard, a lot is at stake with this amendment. So I'm gonna give you a few things that you can do to help make sure that we defeat this and, and win this just what's just one battle and a long war to close corporate tax loopholes in our state. So first, getting informed. You're already here, you saw the presentation, but it's a lot of information to take in. So if you head to prosperityproject.la, you'll find the information that you just heard in this presentation on one page, all the seven things you need to know in one place, read over it, share it with your friends, get clear on it. Because like, like you've heard tonight, when we're clear on this, we, we know that no is the only answer on this amendment. The second thing you can do is help spread the word. So like they said, we've got a handful of undecided voters, but as soon as people understand it, they're gonna vote no. So identify five, 15, maybe 50 people that you can reach out to, explain this amendment, 
Um, you can be really strategic with it. Think about who you want to talk to, who would be really fired up and angry about this if they understood all the money that's at stake for our schools and our communities with this amendment. You can also follow this on all the social media channels, follow Together Louisiana on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Also check out Prosperity Project on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You'll see lots of information going out over the next couple of weeks about this amendment. And it's important that we spread that information um, so that everybody's really clear on what's going on here. The next thing you can do is you can support this work. Fighting the biggest industries in the world is kind of unpopular. So we need donations to help sustain this work. Um, to do make a donation, you can go to togetherla.org slash donate. And then the last thing I'm gonna encourage you to do is when you go to prosperityproject.la, click the join the movement tab and give us your contact information so that you can stay informed. This amendment is just one piece in what has been a long fight that we're winning, I'll add, against corporate welfare in this state. So if you, if you sign up, you'll get information about different ways that you and your institution or your organization or your colleagues and your family, maybe your children's school, different ways that you can engage in this fight as we bring money back into our communities and into our schools. Thank you, Maggie. Um, let me just say, uh, I really do appreciate that I, I, because I said earlier, it's sometimes the 1% versus the 99% and, and, and the 1% has the money, but the 99% putting our nickels and dimes and dollars together can make a dent in this and can make a difference. So let's not determine what we can't do. I want to encourage you to do what you can do. Uh, at uh, prosperityproject.la, you can give whatever you can give. And trust me, whatever you can give is enough. Just be sure you've done what you can do. And we certainly would appreciate that because it takes money to move the message from place to place, as you well know. So we have you who help to put feet to this, but we also have to um, have to get the message out in much broader ways too. So thank you, Maggie. Thank you all for uh, even considering um, that it, it does cost money to fight these giants. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, again, turn it over to uh, Sean. Thank you, Reverend Jackson. We want to move into breakout rooms so that we can begin uh, uh, practicing our, our saying our own understanding of what Amendment 5 uh, means to you. You know, what, is, what does it mean to you personally? You're going to be talking to someone about this, and you're, you're going to want to try to communicate this. When we're in these, these, these breakout rooms, we'll be there for about 10 or 12 minutes. There'll be about 12 people. Uh, we'd like you to just appoint someone to lead the group. And to lead the group doesn't mean you do all the talking. It means you make sure everybody talks. So you kind of want to watch the time, you know, you get 30 seconds, 45 seconds, maybe at the end of the time you say, you know what uh, Miss uh, Sharon said, really rung a bell for me. Wow. And you want to, you want to write that down and, and remember that. Again, we're not going to get this uh, right in these groups, but we need to begin practicing. How do we communicate? Because we truly believe when people understand this amendment, we will defeat the amendment. So we're, we're gonna put you in breakout rooms, put someone in charge, everybody speaks 30 to 45 seconds. What does Amendment 5 mean to you? All right, they should be opening. <laughs> there we go. All right, simply press, press join on your screen and we'll get to the room, right?
Uh, if folks are not seeing the, the invite to the breakout room, if you tap your screen, then you'll see a little uh, uh, button that says breakout rooms. Um, it's got like four squares. And then if you hit that button, there will be an option to join. And joining is how it'll send you into the breakout room. And then we'll be back in uh, oh, about six or seven minutes.
Pastor Sean, you may need to unmute yourself. We're just giving folks a minute as people continue to come back into the main group. Uh, I trust and hope that your conversations were as fruitful as ours. I'm looking for uh, my co-chair, uh, Reverend Jackson, who's going to pick it I'm up. Here. here. All right, yeah. Reverend Jackson. Um, all right. Um, is everybody? I don't know if everybody's back, but um, but I do want to say thank you so much for uh, the time you spent. I know it was well spent, and uh, that uh, if it was anything like uh, the group I was in, it was a fruitful conversation, affirming the fact that if people understand this, they will vote no. <laughs> if people understand, and in the tradition, Father Andrew was speaking earlier about his tradition, and in the Christian tradition in scripture, in our wisdom literature, there is a simple statement written by a proverb writer who says that wisdom is the principal thing, so get wisdom, but in all of your getting, get understanding, which suggests that it is possible to be able to read but not necessarily to understand. And the way this amendment proposal is written, um, it's not written for the average person to understand. It's written to mislead the average voter. I helped a lady today. I said to her that two Latin phrases in one English sentence, you know, ad valorem and in lieu. Most people are, are, are navigating the English language, much less adding Latin to it, you, you mm. would think. That it should be easy rather than it should be simple rather than difficult. I want to tell you that that's the game. Again, I want to double down on what Father Andrew said. Sometimes they think we're foolish and we've got to be a step ahead of them and let's educate our friends, let's educate our families um, so that they don't make the same mistake. Thank you all so much for the time we spent. Um, wanted to, um, I don't know if that those who are here with us today who can give us a little information, I don't know, maybe one of uh, even our organizers to talk a little bit about our civic academies that are coming up as we prepare to close this meeting today. We want you to know what to look forward to as well. So yeah, I can take that up for us. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Philip Norman. I'm with Together Baton Rouge. Um, so we've received a lot of information tonight. And if that information has impacted you, like it's impacted me, you wanna go tell everyone you know about how disastrous this amendment would be for the people of Louisiana. And guess what? We're gonna help you do just that. Every Thursday at 5 p.m. between now and election day, we're going to be hosting a 30 minute civic academy delivering the same information you received here tonight. Right now, I'm gonna drop a link in the chat box that you'll be able to send to others so they'll be able to sign up to attend another one of these informational sessions. So please invite your neighbors, your professor, your grandmother, people in your faith community, anybody you can think of, so we can continue to spread this vital information. And in addition to our four civic academies, we have a team of leaders ready to train anybody that was so inspired by our illustrious speakers tonight that they want to go and give this uh, presentation at their institution. So whether it's your church, your civic academies, and your uh, neighborhood associations, let's spread the word, let's uh, lift our voices and um and uh, defeat amendment number five. So there'll be a poll uh, coming up on your screen asking if you would like to receive training to um, to give these civic academies that'll get you comfortable with the information that you need to uh, relate to your, to your folks and your churches and your institutions. So just uh, click yes if you'd like to receive that training. It looks like we're looking good so far. Um, now, now we, we, we're gonna need somebody to share the poll. Okay. Uh, I've shared it, it's on the screen yeah. now, Roger. Thank, Thank you. So y'all go ahead, click yes, and let's spread this word. Thank you. I think, uh, Reverend Jackson, we want to say a word about our precinct organizing project as well. Uh, I'm not sure if Kalita Lloyd is here or Jordana uh, Williams, perhaps. I don't know if they if they uh, they might have got locked out early on. Um, I'm here. Um, okay. Okay. Y'all okay. have me on these zooms all the time, and so <laughs> good. Good evening, everyone, and um, we are excited that you all are here. Um, part of an action item of doing this work is making sure that you um, encourage others to vote. Um, that's how we're going to defeat this amendment. And so part of that is the precinct mm -hmm. organizing project, which will allow you to encourage your neighbors. Uh, so it's neighbors organizing their neighbors to get out to vote. 
And so we want everyone on this call to be a block captain if you're not already one. Um, if you want to wave, if you are a block captain so that you can know that you're among some beautiful and great people. Um, but if you are not a block captain, we are encouraging you to be a block captain. Um, we will put a link in the chat for you to sign up. We are in a phase where we are reaching out to 10 households. So what does it mean to be a block captain? You're gonna reach out to 10 households in your neighborhood and encourage them to vote. And so you're gonna be making some initial contacts, doing early voting as well as on election day. And so we're encouraging early mm -hmm. vote, voting for sure. Um, so become a block captain, do what we need to do to defeat amendment five. Thank you, Kalita. Uh, let's, uh, Reverend Jackson, um, should I just take us out here? Yeah, you can. Could, Thank could, you so much. Could I we hear it. one more time where all these educational materials are going to be, either from the coach? Thank you, Broad. Yeah. Oh, I can unmute myself. Hey, everyone. Um, Go head to prosperityproject.la. You'll also be able to find materials on our social media channels. That's for Together Louisiana and for Prosperity Project. So whatever channels you're on, check it out or head to the website. All right. Thank you Maggie, so much. How soon will this be posted so people can share with friends? It's posted now. You can share right now. Thank you, Maggie. Right now. Thank you, sir. All right, let's close out um, by saying this together. Amendment five is a big deal. Let's say it together. Amendment five is a big deal. And we know when we defeat it, it will be a big deal for Louisiana, for public school children, for teachers, for infrastructure. We can defeat this, but it, it won't be defeated by itself. So go make it happen. We can do that. Amen. 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 Uh, Reverend Khalid Lloyd, would you just close us with a brief prayer, please? She may have jumped off. Diane, would you go ahead and close us, please? Good and gracious God, thank you so much for this evening of time with people that really want to make for a better world, a better community. Bless our endeavors. Give us the strength and the courage to do what we need to do, mm -hmm. to understand ourselves as the leaders that we are, that we can make change, we can make an impact. Fill us with the spirit of wisdom and courage to go forth and do what we need to do. In the amen. name of the spirit of us all, amen. 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 Good thank to be you with so you. much. Go ahead, Rev. No, no, just say thank you so much. You all have a good night and go and fight the good fight because if they understand, they'll vote no. Very yeah. good, very good. Post meeting with those who are uh, help prepare the meeting if you have time, thanks. Uh, and Diane, we're going to do it in the breakout room. Good. So I'll be sending people there. Okay. You want to stop the streaming uh, project?